Daybreak in this week's unknown story of Western New York marks a grim anniversary. The sinking of a ship deemed unsinkable and the local connections aboard the maiden voyage of the Titanic. After 112 years, the images are still eerie. A Titanic lying on the floor of the Atlantic. A grim reminder of a disaster that took 1,503 lives. A silent gravesite filled with so many stories and like so many other things, a Buffalo connection. Turn of the century, eighth largest city. So of course, a lot of people have connections to Buffalo. So Titanic hits the iceberg, 11.40 p.m. April 14th, 1912. On board were two people from Buffalo. Henry Sudhall Jr. of Kenmore was on the trip of a lifetime, traveling the world with a friend, Howard Irwin. Henry and his friend Howard had taken this two-year-long holiday where they were traveling the world. They started in Buffalo. They went to San Francisco, hitting all the major cities in between. They went to um, Egypt, England, Australia. Actually, in Australia, Henry meets a woman and allegedly falls in love with her. And his intent is he's going to come back to the States and eventually go back to Australia to marry her. Henry was a trimmer by trade, installing and repairing upholstery in carriages and cars. But he was working his way through this trip as a musician, playing the violin. Henry was on the final leg of that trip. He never made it back to Australia or back home to Kenmore, for that matter. He was traveling third class and had no chance of making it to a lifeboat. If his body was recovered, it was not identified. And he's remembered today on this stone in Tanawanda's Elm Lawn Cemetery. Meanwhile, about five miles south, another marker lies here in Forest Lawn, memorializing Edward Austin Kent, Titanic's other Queen City victim. Kent uh, was a, an established architect. He's in his late 50s at the time of his death. He has buildings in Buffalo, Toronto, um, Chautauqua. Kent's legacy is all over western New York and the buildings he designed here on Main Street in the Theater District, Chemical No. 5 Fire Station on Cleveland Avenue, and here at the Unitarian Universalist Church on Elmwood at Ferry, where a plaque also celebrates his life. Kent is remembered for his work here in Buffalo, but also for his heroics on Titanic. He's one of the people who gives up a spot, a potential spot of his own on the ship to help women and children on board. One of the women that he was acquaintances with on the ship, Helen Churchill Candy, she was a, a writer and a journalist. He's, uh, he actually kind of bumps into her um, in this panic, helps her to his ship, and right before she goes onto the lifeboats, she gives him a, a locket with a miniature likeness of her mother. And he takes it, puts it in his pocket for safekeeping, intending to give it back to her when they get back to you know the States. Although he never made it back, his body was recovered and keeping his word, even in death, that locket made its way back to Helen Churchill Candy. Now, Kent and Sudhall were the only ones from the Buffalo area, but there were about 30 other people from southern Ontario and the greater western New York region. If you'd like to hear much more details about the Titanic and the history, Tony has launched his latest podcast about it this morning that focuses on the disaster, and you can access that through the History Museum's website.